This video is about parallel computing models and how Parallel Studio implements them. My name is Rick Leinecker. So there are four main models that we will talk about. The first is vectorization. The second is multi-threading. The third is multi-processing. And the fourth is a hybrid of all three. Before getting started, let's make a few notes on parallel programming. The first and most important thing you need to remember is that it is more difficult than sequential programming. We all learn sequential programming to start with. That's one instruction comes after the other. But with parallel programming, you have things happen simultaneously, which means you have to keep track of many more things, um, requires a lot more bookkeeping. So there are two main categories that parallelism breaks down into. Data parallelism and task parallelism. Data parallelism is where multiple pieces of data are acted upon simultaneously. Task parallelism is where multiple tasks occur simultaneously. I've got to point out that data parallelism is a subset of task parallelism, but we draw a distinction to make our discussion more clear. So what is vectorization? Well, it relies on a paradigm known as single instruction multiple data, or SIMD. And this relies on a CPU mechanism. This mechanism performs multiple data operations with a single CPU instruction. And as you can imagine, this improves the performance of an application tremendously. Parallel Studio offers easy ways to vectorize code. So now we'll take a look at a very simple example. Here we have a fairly simple C++ example. It is simply adding the array elements of one array to the elements of another array. Now you might think that this is going to go through one at a time, adding each array element, such as index 0, then index 1, and index 2, and so forth. But in reality, it's going to do them four at a time because we're using auto vectorize with the Intel compiler. Now I can bring this point home by going into disassembly and then we're going to take a look at this. So for starters it sets up the for loop and here it's grabbing not just an integer which you might expect for your sequential paradigm but it's grabbing a double D word, or in other words, four integers. This next instruction is adding all four integers based on another array. Finally, it's storing them back into the array that we're adding to, the destination array. So as you can see, if we look at the assembly code, which is under the covers of the C++ code, the Intel compiler is doing quite a bit of work to vectorize this and take advantage of the CPU vectorization mechanism. In that example, there may have been two new Intel assembly opcodes that you haven't seen before. So for reference, let me mention them. Move DQA moves a double quad word from one place to another. PADDD adds packed integers. For instance, in our case, it, it was four integers that were packed into that double quad word. It added those integers in one single opcode. It's fair to note, besides PADDD, there are PADDW for words and PADDB for bytes. So let's talk about some vectorization tips which might help your application development. So you should start by using compiler reports to determine why vectorization failed. And there are quite a few reasons why vectorization fails. These reports will tell you what they are and this will lead you to ways to fix them. You can also help the compiler by making suggestions for safe vectorization. There are directives and pragmas that you can use which make suggestions to the compiler. You must always choose the appropriate vectorization approach. For instance, how data is aligned and how data is being acted upon. The vectorization advisor 
will really help you because it will take a look at your program and give you hints and suggestions for how you can improve your vectorization. So you should also try to reach a balance for your vectorization between performance and maintainability. And these two things are sometimes at odds. Performance sometimes means your maintainability or your readability or your understandability is less. Maintainability, which means for me that my code is easier to read and understand, sometimes makes performance suffer. So you need to reach a balance. And lastly, use the existing libraries that come with the Intel Parallel Studio because these are already vectorized in optimal ways. Now we come to multi-threading. For this discussion, we'll be considering just single programs. Within each of these programs, control breaks into multiple threads that do their own task. Each of these threads have access to a shared memory pool. Each of these threads also has access to their own private memory pool. With Intel Parallel Studio, you have three easy multi-threading options. The first is to use OpenMP. The second is to use Silk Plus. And the third is to use the threading building blocks. There are some issues when it comes to multi-threading. The first is known as data races. This is when multiple threads try to update a single memory location. It is unclear what the final result will be in that memory location since it is unclear which thread wrote last. Locks are a way of preventing multiple threads from updating single memory locations. But with these locks come lock contentions. Lock contentions can really uh, significantly degrade performance so it is in your best interest to always look for a way around using locks so you can avoid lock contentions. All of this falls into the area of data sharing. Now we will see some simple examples of using multi-threading. Alright, now we're going to look at three simple programming examples. This first one you can see here. Here's my program entry point. And all I do is I use this silk underscore spawn keyword followed by the method I want to spawn and it kicks this method off. After it does that it goes on to continue executing code in the main thread. Now silk does have some synchronization things so I could wait for that uh, talk about this thread method to finish or I could just kick it off and do other things in the meantime. So let's go ahead and run this. And you notice that both threads are alternating what they print to the screen, showing you that they're both executing at the same time. Next, we have our OpenMP example. This has a slightly different paradigm. We're going to use that pragma, and the pragma is OMP parallel, and then we tell it the number of threads. We can make that anything we want, but we're only going to have two. And then each thread will count and show you what their thread number is. Here again, these threads should take turns, and they do. Thread 0, thread number 0, and thread number 1. So this is the threading building blocks version. And as you can see, it's a bit more complicated as far as code goes. But with the complication comes additional flexibility. So the first thing we do here is we create an empty task. We set its reference count to 1. And that way when we come down here to wait, it knows how many references to wait for. Okay. We tell the task that we want it to execute creating class. And then we spawn it. And when it spawns, it's going to go ahead and run this method right here, the execute method. After it spawns it, though, our main thread comes down here to execute this. Finally, we wait for the greeting class to be done, and we have to destroy the worker class. So let's take a look at that. And 
And as you can see, they're alternating as you would expect. So here are some multi-threading tips. The first would be to use the optimized libraries that come with Parallel Studio. They are already optimized for multi-threaded operation and will give you a very good performance. So if you can use them, it's in your best interest to do so. Approach threading with a plan. As we've already said in this video, threading is difficult, much more difficult than sequential programming. So for this reason, you must plan ahead to make sure that you've addressed all of the multi-threading issues that may arise in your program. It is also in your best interest to use analysis tools, the ones that come with Parallel Studio, to detect any kind of problems with multi-threading. So we've spent a lot of time talking about multi-threaded programming. Now let's talk about multi-process programming. And that's where two different processes are going to communicate or work on the same data or do the same task or share a task. So Intel has implemented the Message Passing Interface, or MPI, in Parallel Studio, and it is a great and robust and fast solution. There were quite a few things that came before MPI, none of which were perfect. There was the component object model, which acted as a mediator between processes. There was the distributed component object model, which went one step further. You could always talk back and forth with TCP IP. You could use shared memory files. You could send Windows messages. And you could use pipes. None of these were that perfect, and they were on the slow side, too. So Intel's MPI is scalable, it's fast, it's really simple to use compared to the previous solutions, and it does provide inter-process communications between processes. Okay, so here I've created a simple program to show you just how easy it is to use MPI for inter-process communication. In other words, um, parallel programming using multiple processes. So this is the startup code, which is going to get everything kicked off and set up. And I create an outgoing buffer to send a message. And finally, the only thing I need to do to send a message to the destination is use this send command. When I'm done with everything, I just do finalize. So once I'm set up, then it's a matter of doing using send and receive commands to talk to another process and work with that process to accomplish uh, goals, whether it's uh, data processing or uh, performing a, a common task. In conclusion, Intel has made it very easy to create parallel applications using Parallel Studio. This includes vectorized data, multi-threaded programming, and multi-process programming. They are all part of the mix. In a very short amount of time, you can create robust parallel applications.